Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I hope I am audible and visible. Okay, so we are continuing with our uh, MCQ series, uh, UPSC Static MCQs. Uh, this is there are six parts in this series, and the last one will be aired on December thirty first. Okay. So without further ado, let's begin today's session. This is a one hour session. Okay, today it is only a one hour session. We will end by five pm, and uh, we will be looking into twenty five MCQs from the static portions. All right. Okay. So let's begin. Before we move on, let me just introduce to you uh, about an academy. An academy is India's largest learning platform, which offers you a wide variety of contents. You have daily live classes where you can chat with the educator. engage in discussions you know clear your doubts etc live tests and quizzes which will help you to evaluate your own preparation structured courses which are designed to completely cover the syllabus for that particular examination okay and unlimited access to all an academy resources to get all these things first thing to do is download an academy learning app please download this app from google play and app store and create an account okay and grab a subscription welcome alipsa good evening So uh, about me, I am Mathur Shankarar Varya. Uh, you can follow me in my Telegram channel as shown here, t dot me slash msrw one. Similarly, anacademy dot com slash adrid msrw. You can follow these two Telegram uh, channels uh, in order to get my class notes, PDFs, you know, session links, etc., etc. All right. Now, Anacademy brings you top educators from all over the country. You might have seen most of them already, so no further introduction necessary in that area. So the basic UPSC CSE package of an academy looks something like this. Okay, we have everything. We have polity, history, current affairs. All the basic things are covered at an academy. We have also specialized such sessions such as practice and strategy, answer writing courses for mains, etc., etc. All right, these are you know focusing on that particular examination, which will help you to improve your answer writing skills, etc. So basically, uh, there are two kinds of packages in an academy. One is plus package, other one is iconic. In the plus package, these are the available uh, time formats. Here, so far, what I have, whatever I have mentioned, is available to you in this package. A typical one-year subscription will cost you forty-nine thousand five hundred rupees. But if you use my code MSRW one, you can actually get ten percent discount. Okay, and can pay forty-four five fifty. Two-year courses are also there. Same uh, offers are all applicable. The other one is known as iconic. Iconic is something basically over and above the plus package. Okay, you will get everything that is in the plus package. Along with that, you will also get a personal coach. Personal coach means basically a person who you know a dedicated mentor, a one-to-one -one session with the educator. Then daily main sensor writing practice, study planner sessions, personalized feedback sessions. All these are the advantages of iconic subscription. Clear? So if you go for a subscription here, one year it will cost you sixty-nine thousand five hundred. But using my code MSRW one, you can actually buy. a uh, 10% discount here as well and can pay 62 550 okay last but not least regarding optionals these are the price chart uh an academy brings you almost all the optional subjects that are available with upsc so you can also uh, you know pick an optional according to your own liking and grab a subscription from an academy typical one year subscription here will cost you 27 500 using the code msrw1 will fetch you 10% discount plenty of free contents are also there in an academy free videos okay free contents to unlock them you have to use an educator code there also you can provide the same msrw1 okay regarding an academy combat i think you know this already we are you know we are going to organize more and more combats in the coming months so be ready be prepared i will announce it when the you know the dates are out okay so the next year's upsc prelims is on june 27 so we have about 6 months to go and an academy has started uh, live batches for exclusively focusing on this prelims exam okay so uh, we have started a class yesterday 28th december please uh, do look into this if you have not already done that top educators like manal sir sithar sir etc are taking classes okay so we have classes in bilingual format uh, hindi alone format and english alone format you can pick one according to your own choice and grab a subscription okay regarding an iconic course we are have going to have a price hike very soon so if you want if you are planning to get a iconic subscription this is the right time to do it 
because we are going to increase the prices pretty soon. All right. So yeah, basically that is it regarding the introduction part. If you have any queries uh, regarding any of these, you can ask me, I will help you through that. Okay. So now let's start the 25 MCQs. So the first five MCQs are from history, followed by geography, polity, economics, and environment. Okay. So I hope you all are ready. Uh, here we go. The first question, consider the following statements. One, Mahabharata is considered as Adhikavya composed by Vedabhyasa and consists of 18 Parvas. Two, Ramayana is composed by Vatmiki and consists of seven Kandas. Select the correct answer using the quotes given below. Good evening, Ramkumar. Good evening, Satya. Good evening, Vinmala. Sabita, welcome. Okay. Uh, so basically, I will give you like 10 to 15 seconds for uh, each question and you can answer them. All right. Once I get a couple of answers, I will move on. History questions, I, I think most of them I have already discussed in my Unacademy uh, platform classes. Okay. Others are new, but first five questions of history have been discussed in various sessions. So this will be, you know, let's see how much you remember. Any idea? First question. Lipsa is guessing it is B. Satya is also going with B. Yes, very good both of you. Correct answer. Option B. So Mahabharata is considered as Adhikavya uh, composed by Veda Vyasa and consists of 18 Parvas. So we know that Mahabharata is one of the greatest epics of uh, you know India written in Sanskrit by Veda Vyasa and consists of 18 Parvas. That is true. Problem is it is not considered as the Adhikavya. Adhikavya is basically Ramayana. Okay, we have discussed this question in the other classes. Okay, so Adhikavya is Ramayana, so not Mahabharata. That is why first statement is wrong. Second is correct. Ramayana is composed by Vatmiki and consists of seven Kandas. We all know that. Okay, so one is wrong, two is correct. Answer is option B. Second question. Consider the following statements. One, practice of Sati was prevalent in Tamil society and it was known as Shaviliti, Shaviliti. Two, Women in Sangamesh appears to have been educated. 3. Position of widows was miserable as they were prohibited to decorate themselves and participate in any form of amusement. Select the correct answer. Yes, Satya, very good. Hello, Seema, welcome. You have 15 seconds. Okay, Lipsa is saying it is B. Two and three only. Others? Once I get a couple of answers, I will give you the explanation. Okay. Winmeller also saying it is B, 2B. Okay, let's see the answer. Satya is saying it is A. The answer is actually B. Very good. Okay, two and three. So women in Sangamesh appears to have been educated. Correct. We have plenty of women who are, uh, who are who have written a uh, lots of literature around the Sangam period. And in general, in South India, during the Sangam period, women were comparatively much more educated than other societies in India. Okay. So first, second statement is correct. Second one. Position of widows was miserable as they were prohibited to decorate themselves and participate in any form of amusement. This is correct. Although, you know, women were you know, comparatively liberal, uh, I mean, attitude towards women were comparatively liberal, still, the condition of widows were miserable. There was no change in that. They were prevented from using, you know, jewelry and ornaments, etc, etc. They were not allowed to participate in ceremonies and festivals. Okay, so third statement is also correct. First statement is wrong. Practice of Sati was prevalent in Tamil society and it was known as Chevilitai. This is wrong. It was known as Tippayatal. Tippayat. 
ओके वॉट इज चेविलिटाई चेविलिटाई इज बेसिकली फोस्टर मदर be very careful about these kinds of terms okay upsc always ask such questions i have already told you regarding the same okay so basically tippayattu is sati chevilita is form foster mother okay so statement number 1 is incorrect but the first part is correct practice of sati was prevalent in tamil society that is true okay so the answer is option b question number 3 consider the following statements Ashtadigajas adorn the court of Krishna Devaraya. Two, Jambavati Kalyanam and Ushaam Parinayam. The two Sanskrit works are authored by Krishna Devaraya. Select the correct answer. Good evening, Sabhagya. Welcome. Question number three. We, uh, today's session is uh, short. Okay, we do not have forty questions. We have only. Uh, 25 questions. So this is a one-hour session. We will complete by 5 p.m. Okay. All right. Uh, Saupagya say good evening. Uh, see my saying is D. None of the above. Anyone else? I will give you 15 seconds or. If I get two answers minimum, then I will explain. Satya is saying A. Yes. Saubhagya also going with A. Amud Amudhini also saying it is A. Let's see. Correct answer is D. Very good. Okay, Sima Shetty. Correct answer option D. Ashtadik Gajas adorned the court of Krishna Devaraya. Yes. Okay, the court there are Ashtadik Gajas are basically the you know literate uh, the masters of literature in the court of Krishna Devaraya. It is not like a council of ministers or anything. Basically, they are all associated with literature in some way. Ashtadik Gajas. Okay, second one, Jampavadi Kalyanam and Usha Parinayam. The two Sanskrit works are authored by Krishna Devaraya. Also correct. The other famous work of Krishna Devaraya is Amukta Malyada. Okay, but Amukta Malyada is written in Telugu, but these two, Jambavati Kalyanam and Usha Parinayam, these two are written in Sanskrit. So second statement is also correct. You are asked to pick the incorrect statements. Okay, both are correct. So the answer is option D. None of the above. All right. Question number four. Consider the following statements. One, Lala Hardayal started India House in London as a center for Indian students. Two. Madan Lal Thingra assassinated the India office bureaucrat Curzon Billy in 1909. Select the correct answer. Yes, Seema, very good. Amukta Malyada, written in Telugu. So this is a question from modern India. We have only one more question from history. After that, five questions from geography. Okay. any guesses if you know the answer please put it in the youtube live chat okay we can make it as much interactive as possible lala hardaya started india house in london as a center for indian students madan lal thingra assassinated india office bureaucrat curzon billy in 1909 okay saubhagya is saying it is b what about others Any idea? Any guesses? Lipsa saying four is C, I guess. All right. Sima going with C. Satya B. Correct answer is indeed option B. Two only. So Madan Lal Thingra assassinated the Indian Office bureaucrat Curzon Billy in 1909. Yes, that is correct. This was around the time when we see rise in revolutionary activities. Okay, we have the you know moderate extremists and a high, you know a much more radical class named as revolutionaries. So we see plenty of revolutionary activities around the you know period of nineteen not five to nineteen fifteen. So six statement two is correct. First statement is wrong. It is not Lala Hardayal who started India House in London. It is Shyamji Krishna Varma. Okay, Shyamji Krishna Varma. He is the person who started India House in London. 
for as a center for indian students lala hardayal is associated with gather okay gather party clear so first statement is incorrect answer is option b two only moving on to the final question from history five question number five consider the following statements one indian national army was the brainchild of subhash chandra bose two indian club of tokyo was founded by subhash chandra bose select the correct answer yes sabhagya correct shamji amudin amudini rajendran correct lala hardayal san francisco i mean gather party was started in san francisco in united states of america okay shamji krishna or maya seema also correct question 5 any guesses okay see my saying it is c 5 is c all right i will wait for a 5 more seconds saubhagya saying c satya saying d none of the above okay i got three answers so i think i will explain it now correct answer is indeed d none of the above satya pande very good both are incorrect indian national army was the brain child of subhash chandra bose no wrong subhash chandra bose later took over the indian national army that but that was not his brain child the idea of forming such an army using the prisoners of war was by some other person named as captain mohan singh okay it was captain mohan singh uh, who came up with this idea and convinced the japanese uh, to you know release the prisoners of war to form an army known as indian national army clear subhash chandra bose later came and took over the authority that's all so first statement is wrong second one indian club of tokyo was founded by subhash chandra bose again wrong this was founded by another famous extremist named as rash bihari bose okay rash bihari bose earlier escaped from india and went into japan okay and he's organized various uh, you know societies in japan uh, to contribute to the indian national movement it was his idea to start the indian club in tokyo not subhash chandra bose so both the statements are incorrect answer is option b none of the above okay so five questions are done moving on to the next five questions which will be from geography i hope you are ready so the first question both foen and chinook are dry winds experienced on the leeward side of mountains two in northern hemisphere during cyclones the wind blows inwards into regions of low pressure circulating in clockwise direction select the correct answer yeah seema correct captain mohan singh So this is the first question from geography there are five questions from geography then five from polity five from economics five from environment okay we have this session every day at 4 pm okay till 5 pm one hour session any guesses anyone I have not gotten any answers so far. Yeah, Sauhage is saying C. Both are correct. All right. I think now I will explain the answer. Yeah, Satya B, Lipsa B. Correct answer is A. One only. Both Fohen and Chinook are dry winds. experienced on the leeward side of mountains this is correct okay so what happens this uh, foven and chinook chinook is also known as snow eater okay i think you have heard about that it is known as snow eater why because it can raise the temperature of that place very quickly thereby melting off all the snow so basically what happens is when the wind descend from the mountain okay saying it's in the leeward side so in the windward side the wind will ascend the mountain now this is the mountain so in the windward side the wind will be ascending the mountain in the leeward side it will descend correct 
so when the wind descends what will happen it will start adding more and more pressure at the bottom okay too much pressure will occur in the lower areas and this pressure will increase the temperature okay so first statement is correct both are dry winds experienced on the leeward side of mountains chinook is experienced in leeward side of rockies in america and fohen is experienced in leeward side of alps clear second one in northern hemisphere during the cyclones of uh, during the cyclones the wind blow inwards into the regions of low pressure circulating in clockwise direction no small difference anti clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere it is always anti clockwise direction as far as cyclones are concerned and in southern hemisphere it is clockwise direction okay just remember that don't forget in the northern hemisphere cyclones are always in anti clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere they are always in clockwise direction okay so the answer is option a one only seventh question consider the following statements the land masses of peninsular plateau are comparatively unstable to the himalayan region two peninsular plateau is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks with steep hills and narrow valleys select the correct answer Yes, Seema, correct. Snow eater. Seventh question. Again, use your imagine. No, logic. Take your time. Try to reason it out. Both statements. This can be solved with pure logic. you have 10 seconds any idea so far i did not get any responses okay everybody is going with option b satya vinmalar and seema everybody is saying it is b okay i get it why you say b but the answer is d none of the above All right. First statement is wrong. Second statement is also wrong. The land masses of peninsular plateau are comparatively unstable to the Himalayan region. That is correct. Himalayan region is, you know, always undergoing some orogenic process, right? It, you know, mountain building process is happening all the time. We have plenty of avalanches, etc., etc. All in all, the land mass is pretty much, you know, unstable in the mountain building region, such as those of Himalayas. Himalayas is a young fold mountain. so it is still growing on okay so first statement is incorrect peninsular uh, plateau is much more old and much more you know stable compared to himalayas second one peninsular plateau is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks yes up to here it is correct peninsular plateau we find black soil because of volcanic activity so igneous rocks are there obviously metamorphic rocks which you know form eventually from igneous rocks also there true but with steep hills and narrow valleys think about it what are some of the features of the deccan plateau or the peninsular plateau they are extremely old correct it is not a new landform it is very 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 old millions of years so can we find steep hills and narrow valleys no the hills will be denuded the hills will be very much you know uh, it won't be, it won't be steep at all it will be very gradual for example the aravalli hills aravalli hills is also very you know uh, it is a example of a residual mountain because it has undergone denudation and weathering for a very long period of time same happens in peninsular plateau also we see wide valleys and steep word is wrong okay or let's go with less steep some steeps are there but uh, in general Uh, the hills are not steep at all very gradual okay both statements are incorrect answer is option d question 8 consider the following statements about tropical evergreen forest in india one these forests found in the western slope of western ghats and hills of the northeastern region of india two species found in these forests include rosewood hurra ameltas aini and ebony select the correct answer
yes satya pande correct white valleys seema correct igneous and metamorphic rocks are there vinmal are saying it is c a it is c saubhagya also going with c yeah i got a couple of answers so i will explain answer is correct c okay so these forests are found in western slope of western ghats western slope of western ghats receive plenty of southwest monsoon so very good for tropical evergreen forest type of vegetation so that is correct and northeastern region of india which is basically the you know garo khasi jaintia hills okay there also we receive plenty of rainfall uh, probably the highest rainfall in the world okay uh, again from southwest monsoon so ideal for tropical evergreen forest statement 1 number 1 is correct two species found in these forests include rosewood hura amaltas aini and ebony correct make sure you study about certain species that are stand out in particular kind of ecosystems okay uh, so these are examples of those vegetation which is found in tropical evergreen forest both are correct answer is option c question 9 recently the canine distemper virus infection was found at which of the following protected areas in india okay canine distemper virus cdv infection was found in which of the following protected areas in india option a bandipur national park option b kaziranga wildlife sanctuary option c gir wildlife sanctuary d periyar wildlife sanctuary uh, supriya welcome hi yeah seema correct meghalaya receives uh, you know masena ram and shirapunji these are the two places with heaviest rainfalls in the entire world masenram receives the highest second is sirapunj regarding one of the questions yesterday i think i hope you have seen the telegram uh, article that i have shared the due process of law is actually you know referred in the case of maneka gandhi okay in the maneka gandhi case supreme court referred about the due process of law not minerva mills okay minerva mills deals with fundamental rights versus directive principles of state policy anyway ninth question okay everybody is going with c and saubhagya is saying it is d correct answer is option c gir wildlife sanctuary okay there were plenty of newspaper reports saying that many lions okay about 20 plus lions uh of the gir wildlife sanctuary died within a span of one month because of this virus canine distemper virus okay so gir wildlife sanctuary is the only area where we see that many number of asiatic lions okay and this virus killed about 20 plus lions in one month okay very infectious and this was all over the news for a while around that time let's move on question number 10 last question from geography consider the following statements one marmagoa port was the first port developed soon after independence two kandla port accounts for about 50% of india's iron ore export select the correct answer 10th question let's see 15 seconds any idea anyone this is another uh, you know a question from human geography also part of our post independence india okay okay vinmal are saying uh, d lipsa saying c so what is the correct answer 10th question it is d none of the above okay so marmagoa port was the first port developed soon after independence wrong it is actually the kandla port okay second one kandla port accounts for about 50% of india's iron ore export no that is marmagoa port i simple exchange okay so what happened after independence when pakistan was you know split as a different country india lost the karachi port karachi port was one of the most important ports at that time when india was you know together as a single nation 
so when india lost karachi port to pakistan india had to you know quickly come up with another port and this is when kandla was developed okay in the gulf of kutch gujarat so first statement was incorrect second one marmagoa port accounts for 50% of india's iron ore export also correct so the answer is option d neither of the statements are correct so that is it 10 questions done the next 10 questions are from polity okay sorry next five questions 11th question state legislature can make laws to enforce dash one fundamental rights two directive principles of state policy three fundamental duties select the correct answer yes exactly saubhagya interchanged question 11 how many of you can get this in malay is saying it is b 1 and 2 what about others you can follow me in my telegram channel to get the class notes pdfs etc okay this is my telegram channel okay t.me/msrw1 okay everybody is going with option b and d so what is the answer 11th question answer is c anyone no nobody got that it is actually c okay 2 and 3 state legislature can make laws to enforce dpsp and fundamental rights fundamental duties okay but they cannot make laws to enforce fundamental rights those laws to enforce fundamental rights can only be made by parliament not state legislature okay very careful here dpsp and fundamental duties laws can be made by state that's fine but for fundamental rights it should be made by parliament state legislature does not have the power to do that okay question number 12 the term cabinet is only used once in indian constitution where can we see this option a directive principles of state policy option b preamble option c fundamental rights option d none of the none of the above okay i am actually i know sitting in front of this uh telegram and all one second guys let me just adjust it okay question number 12 everybody going with d none of the above so give me the correct answer if it is d then you have to tell me the correct answer d is correct the term cabinet is used only once in indian constitution and where is it none of the above is the correct answer so you have to tell me where can i find it parliament no give me the more accurate answer nilam yes satya pande exactly article 352 brought in by 44th constitutional amendment act okay in the national emergency clause some changes were made in the 44th constitutional amendment cabinet word was added in article 352 for national emergency okay okay question 13 consider the following statements one Article 263 contemplate the establishment of an interstate council by parliament to effect coordination between states and between center and states. Two, union home minister is the chairman of this council. Select the correct answer. Yes, very good. Seema correct, Saubhagya correct. Question 13. two more questions from polity and then five questions from economics you have 15 seconds to answer this one regarding article 263 vinmalar is saying c nilam took back the answer any others satya a okay correct answer 
is indeed option A. One only. So Article 263 contemplates the establishment of interstate council by parliament to effect coordination between states and between centre and states. This is correct. Okay. Article 262 deals with interstate river water treaty and 263 deals with interstate council. So uh, first statement is correct. Second one, Union Home Minister is the chairman of this council. No, it is the Prime Minister, not Union Home Minister. Union Home Minister is the chairman of Zonal Councils. Yesterday we looked into that. Okay, Central Home Minister is the chairman of Zonal Councils. Interstate Council is chaired by Prime Minister. So answer is option A. Penultimate question from Polity, 14th question. Which one of the following Constitutional Amendment Act made it obligatory for the president to give his assent to constitution amendment bills. Option A, 42nd amendment. Option B, 44th amendment. Option C, 24th amendment. Option D, none of the above. Yeah, Nilam correct, Seema correct. Sabhagya also, very good. 14th question. You have 15 seconds. Any idea? So which one is it? 42nd Amendment, 44th uh, Amendment, 24 or none of the above? D. Everybody going with option D? Correct answer to 14th question is option C, 24th amendment. Okay, it is not none of the above, it is actually 24th amendment. Until the 24th constitutional amendment, president has the choice you know, of not giving his assent in constitutional amendments. But since this amendment, if a constitutional amend, uh, amendment bill is passed by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and is sent to the president for his assent, he has no other choice but to sign it. He can't veto it. He can't send it back. He has to sign it. Okay. So answer is option C. Last question from Polity. 15th question. Consider the following statements. 1. President can grant pardon even in cases where the punishment or sentence is by a court martial whereas governor cannot. 2. President can grant pardon in all cases where the sentence given is the sentence of death by, but governor cannot pardon death sentence. Select the correct answer. Yeah, Nilam, correct. 14th question. Uh, C was the answer. Seema also. Satya. 15th question. Any idea? Vinmalar C. Seema Shetty also going with C. What is the answer to 15th question? It is indeed option C. Both are true. So there are there is actually pardoning power both for president and for governor. But president has some you know extra powers in the pardon area compared to governor. Number one is for court martial. Okay, court martial is dealing with army, military. Okay, so for military court martials, only president can issue pardon. Governor cannot do that. Similarly, for death sentences, also governor cannot give pardon, only president can do this. Clear. Both are correct. Answer is option C. In your Lakshmi Kant textbook, the difference is clearly given. So please do read that and look into other differences also. Okay. So 15 questions done. Uh, before moving into the next question, let me just remind you. Uh, we have started a UPSC prelims 2021 specific batch yesterday. Top educators like Manal sir, etc. are teaching. Complete syllabus coverage. Plenty of mock tests are all there. Please do look into this. Uh, there are in bilingual classes, English classes and Hindi classes. You can choose one according to your own convenience. Use the code MSRW1 to get 10% off in any of these courses. Okay. So the next five questions are from economics. Question 16. Which among the following is the only industry in India which is self-reliant and complete in the value chain from raw material to highest value added products. Option A, iron and steel industry. Option B, textile industry. C, fertilizer industry. 
ഡി സിമെന്റ് ഇൻഡസ്ട്രി താങ്ക് യു നിലം ഓക്കെ വി വിൽ ഡു മോർ സച്ച് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഇൻ ദ ഫ്യൂച്ചർ ഓക്കെ Sixteenth question. Any idea? Vinmalar is Sauhagya, Vinmalar, Satya, Seema. Everybody going with option B. Textile industry. Yes, correct. Okay. Even in the time of British, okay, about 200 years ago, even then, Indian textiles was... you know one of the most in demand all over the world and even now textile industry is the only industry in india which is self reliant and complete in its value chain what does that mean complete in its value chain it means starting from raw materials to the highest value added till then everything is there done in india itself okay so answer is textile industry 17th question consider the following statements about world trade organization one world trade organization allows its member countries to provide subsidies for agriculture and incentive exports two wto does not deal with trade in services and international trade select the correct answer atmanirbhar bharat <laughs> yeah this is atmanirbhar industry okay textile industry Anyway, 17th question regarding World Trade Organization. Choose the correct answer. You have 10 seconds. Okay. Nilam is saying it is A, one only. Others? Sauhagya A, Vinmalar A, Seema A. Okay, everybody is going with option A. So, yeah, correct answer is option A. So, first statement is a no-brainer. WTO allows its member countries to provide subsidies for agriculture and incentive exports. Correct. Okay, especially lower income countries. Okay, or LTC or low developed countries. Least developed countries, sorry. Least developed countries. These kind of nations have special, you know, subsidy and was established in the Uruguay rounds. Okay, after the GATT. you know gat agreement came to an end so uh, gat was converted into wto gat did not looked into look into services but wto looks into both goods and services question 18 consider the following statements regarding generalized system of preferences gsp one under gsp us government impose lower import tariffs for a selected group of countries than the normal tariffs that apply to all other wto countries 2 GSP boosts competitiveness in the US by reducing costs of imported inputs used by domestic companies to manufacture goods in the United States select the correct answer yes sauhagya correct question 18 regarding generalized system of preferences select the correct answer i will wait for 10 seconds eighteen a c different different answers are coming somebody saying uh, saubhagya a nilam c correct answer is actually option c okay seema a vinmalar c c is the correct answer both are true okay so gsp generalized system of preferences is basically an you know uh, a policy of united states of america whereby it grants certain special tariffs okay which is lower than the general tariffs to selected countries so why is it in the news india did get this gsp for a very long time but donald trump actually took it out took india out from gsp okay that is why it was in the news so statement number 1 is correct 2 gsp boosts competitiveness in the us by reducing costs of imported inputs used by domestic companies to manufacture goods in us yeah 
This was the idea. Okay, by allowing certain goods to be imported in a cheap price, America is trying to, you know, improve its manufacturing sector. Okay, you can bring in certain goods for a very low cost, low low cost imports, and then use these goods to produce. you know higher end uh, higher value added goods so answer is option c both are true penultimate question from economics consider the following statements regarding indian forex reserves okay number 1 gold stocks of rbi are the second largest component of forex reserves two increase in forex reserves will positively appreciate the value of indian rupee select the correct answer I think you know what a forex reserve is. Forex reserve basically means foreign exchange. Okay, foreign exchange reserves. Nineteenth question. Any guesses? Okay, everybody going with option A. Okay, so far we have B. All right. Satya B, Nilam C, Seema Shetty B. Correct answer is option C. Nilam, very good. Both are correct. Gold stocks of RBI are the second largest component in forex reserves. This is correct. What is the largest component? Obviously, foreign currency. okay it is the forex reserves so foreign currency obviously has the largest component is the largest component gold stock of rbi is second largest component okay so statement number 1 is correct second one increase in forex reserves will positively appreciate the value of indian rupee yeah what does this increase in forex reserve means it means more and more foreign currency is available in our reserves so what does this mean this means that there is plenty of supply of foreign currency okay and demand is comparatively less which means we can actually increase the value of indian rupee against foreign money okay plenty of foreign money are coming to india and uh, demand is comparatively less which means we can actually appreciate our rupee uh, the value of our rupee so it has positive uh, you know uh, it will positively appreciate the value of indian rupee answer is option c last question from economics consider the following statements one the third five year plan is the most successful among all five year plans in india two first five year plan gave equal importance to agriculture and industry development select the correct answer twentieth question Uh, there are there are only twenty five questions. The last five questions are from environment. Okay. All right. Satya is saying it is D. Twenty is D. None of the above. Others. Nilam B. Not sure. Seema D. Yes, correct answer is option D. None of the above. Very good. The third five-year plan is the most successful among all five-year plans in India. Wrong. What happened during the third five-year plan? Two wars happened around that time. In 1962, the India-China war. Okay, India-China. Similarly, later there was an India-Pak war. So two wars happened in the during the time of third five-year plan. so government had to put all its resources into war war expenses okay and the third five year plan was basically you know one of the worst uh, in its implementation so one is wrong second one first five year plan gave equal importance to ag agriculture and industrial development no for it gave importance to agriculture 
Industrial development came in the second five-year plan, which was based on PC Mahalanobis's theory. Okay, first one was based on Harrod model. Uh, second one, second five-year plan was based on Mahalanobis model, and that gave importance to industrial development. Both are wrong. Answer is option D. Now the last five questions are from environment. So here we go. Which of the following characteristics can be found in the floral species of taiga bio? Okay, one tall trees, two deep roots, three broad leaves, four seasonal flowering. Select the correct answer. Yeah, Satya correct. Sixth was one of the best. Yeah, Seema correct. Second fire plant concentrated in the industrial activities. Twenty-first question. Characteristics of Floral species of taiga biome. Select the correct answer. Any guesses? <coughs> okay, Sauhagya is saying all the above. D. Others? Once I get a couple of answers, I will explain. Okay, Seema also saying D. So, correct answer is actually option A, 1 and 4 only. I will tell you why. Okay, so I am talking about taiga biome. Okay, taiga biome is basically adjacent to tundra. Tundra is basically the polar, you know, in a polar kind of climate and all. Then uh, after the tundra comes the taiga. So, in the taiga, we have permafrost. Okay, topsoil is very narrow. Okay, very narrow. Uh, underneath it, it is completely permafrost. So, tall trees are there. Yeah, most of the trees in taiga biome are extremely tall. But deep roots, wrong. Why? As I have told you, the topsoil is very narrow. Underneath it, it is permafrost. So, roots cannot go deeper. So, deep roots are not there. It is shallow roots. Third one, broad leaves. No, most of the forests in the taiga biome is basically coniferous. Okay, you know the Christmas tree and all, now. The coniferous kind of vegetation. So, the leaves are not broad, they are, you know, spine-like, needle-like. So, second one, uh, third statement, third one is also wrong. Last one, seasonal flowering. Yes, during winter season, there is no flowering. Okay, the vegetation happens only during summer season, when the snow melts at least a bit. Clear? So, seasonal flowering happens during the summer season only. So, 1 and 4 are correct, 2 and 3 are incorrect. Answer is option 22nd, insect populations are decreasing worldwide, which could potentially cause the collapse of planet's ecosystem. Which one of the following is the major cause of the decline with reference to a recent study? Select the correct answer. Option A, intensive agriculture. Option B, deforestation. Option C, forest fires. Option D, urbanization. Twenty-second question, let's see. We have only 25 questions, okay? Only 3 more questions to go after this. We will end by 5 p.m. Any idea? Prabha, welcome Prabha Ika. Prabha is saying it is welcome. I haven't seen you for a while. Prabha is saying it is C. Forest fires. Others? Satya D, Seema D. What is the correct answer? It is actually option A. Intensive agriculture. Okay. Recent study, I mean the Guardian has reported based on a series of studies that the insect population in the world is decreasing because of intensive agriculture. We use lots of chemicals, you know, pesticides, herbicides, etc, etc to perform, to expand agriculture and to do intensive agriculture. And this is one of the prime reasons for the cause of decreasing in the populations of insects worldwide. Okay, so answer is option A. 23. Consider the following statements. 1. Taiga biome are found in northern and southern regions of the world adjoining the ice-bound poles. 2. No two biomes are alike. 3. 
biome cannot be called an echo as an ecosystem select the correct answer Twenty-third question. You have fifteen seconds to answer this. Let's see. Okay, Satya is saying it is C. Nilam also going with C. One and two. Okay, I got two answers, so I will explain. I think correct answer is option B. Nobody got that. It is option B, two and three. Okay, so no two biomes are alike. Correct. Each biome has its own specific characteristics. It is unique, and no two biomes are alike. Second one, biomes cannot be called as an ecosystem. Also correct. Ecosystem is something different. Okay, I mean, for example, a pond. Okay, a pond is an ecosystem. But we cannot say that for a bi pond is a biome. But pond is an ecosystem. It is not a biome. Tundra is a biome. Taiga is a biome. Clear. So statement three is also uh, correct. Number one. Look at this. Taiga biome are found in northern and southern regions of the world, adjoining ice-bound poles. We know what what is a ta taiga. Okay, it, it it is adjacent to the tundra type of climate. In the northern hemisphere, we have plenty of land. Uh, adjacent to the poles okay for example russia canada usa uh, alaska part of usa are these are all you know nearer to the poles so plenty of land areas are there in order to have a taiga kind of climate but in the southern hemisphere is that the case we have the south pole but other than that is there any land mass which is close enough that much close enough to the poles that is the question no right it is basically ocean we do not have any land mass that is As close enough to southern pole to have a taiga kind of climate. The nearest one will be probably you know Australia and such uh, group of islands, but they are not taiga; they are temperate only. So the answer is option B, two and three. So first statement is wrong. In the northern poles, yeah, southern region, no. Twenty fourth penultimate question for the day. Consider the following statements. One, if the temperature of the water body decreases. The dissolved oxygen content present in it also decreases. Two, the temperature tolerance limit of the aquatic organism is wide in nature. Select the correct answer. Twenty fourth question. Let's see if you get this. Okay, Sabhagya is saying it is C. Anyone else? C is also going with C. Okay, I got two answers. Both are C. Correct answer to twenty fourth question is option D. None of the above. Okay, Sutha Maurya also saying C. Welcome, Sutha. But the answer is option D. None of the above. If the temperature of the water body decreases, the dissolved oxygen content present in it will increase. Okay, there is more oxygen. The the solution of oxygen is much more there in colder water than in hot water. Okay, so when water is heated, the content of oxygen present in that water will reduce. Clear. So first statement is wrong. That is a chemical property. Okay. So first statement is wrong. Second one, the temperature tolerance limit of the aquatic organism organism is wide in nature. Again wrong. Temperate. If it was it was wide in nature, then a aquatic organism should be able to survive in top levels of oceans as well as bottom levels of oceans. But it is not like that. Certain kind. I mean, most of the aquatic organisms are specific. Either they are found in you know lower parts of the ocean. Or they are found in the upper areas. Why? Because they cannot adjust their body temperature that much. Okay, so it is not wide; it is very narrow. Clear. 
that is why certain kind of fishes cannot be seen deep underneath the ocean why it is be because the water is very cold similarly those organisms that live in that kind of you know cold water cannot be seen in the uh, upper areas of the oceans same reason clear so the answer is option d none of the above last question for the day 25 graded response action plan grap which was recently in the news is associated with dash a abolishing the manual scavenging across the country b mitigating the forest fires in himalayan region c controlling the air pollution in delhi d abolishing the single use plastic across the country <coughs> last question for the day graded response action plan which was recently in the news is associated with which among the following yeah, let me just remind you we are going to increase the iconic price uh, subscription price so please uh, take your subscription asap use my code msrw1 to get 10 percentage discount in all kind of subscriptions you can also use the same code to unlock free contents in an academy okay so yeah uh, see my saying it is c controlling air pollution in delhi all right others prabhaika also saying c so what is the answer 25th question correct answer is indeed option c controlling the air pollution in delhi okay delhi has been completely surrounded by air pollution from all this double burning in haryana and you know the pollution from delhi's own traffic etc etc plenty of supreme court orders were exclusively relating the same ngt orders are also there Delhi government implemented the odd even policy to find a solution to this pro uh, issue. Okay, but anyway, the graded response action plan is actually implemented by the government of Delhi to control air pollution in Delhi. Answer is option C. Okay, so that is it. We have come to the end of this session. Thank you everyone for participating. The 5.45 p.m. Unacademy app live quiz starts uh, very soon. So I will uh, share the quiz code in the Telegram channel as shown here t.me slash msrw1 okay tonight at 8 pm in an academy platform we will have another similar session of 25 questions okay so please use my code msrw1 to get 10 percentage discount in any an academy subscriptions as well as to unlock free videos in an academy okay bye bye see you